Welcome to Uncommon Sense, where ordinary financial wisdom just doesn't cut it. Follow along with Eric Bowman as he provides clarity in a cluttered financial world. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Uncommon Sense podcast. My name is Eric Bowman, owner of Bowman Financial Strategies here in Englewood, Colorado. I am a certified tax specialist, a retirement income certified professional, and a certificate holder of the National Social Security Association. Today, we're going to be addressing one of the most common questions that I get, and that is, is Social Security going to run out? And then the follow-up, what should I do when it comes to filing for Social Security? So with me today is Ben George. Ben George is going to help us uh, keep us on track with uh, good questions, as well as uh, helps with all the production value that you see here today. So we thank him for joining us. This one hits kind of close to home, Eric. As someone in their 40s who's been paying into Social Security for 20 years, and all I hear about is, well, who knows what the future is going to be when you get to retirement? Are you going to be able to rely on Social Security? What that, what's that going to look like? So I'm really looking forward to kind of hearing your breakdown and, and clearing up kind of what we're hearing in the news. Yeah, I, I think people hear sound bites without actually understanding what it means when they say Social Security is going to run out. And that's something we want to do a little bit of dive into. And I think um, when it comes to decisions we make based on our understanding of what it means that Social Security is going to run out, we want to look at history to help guide us when it comes to making decisions on irrevocable choices with Social Security. Yeah, I know we'll get into that. And for me, when I when I talk about headlines and what you see in the news, I've seen a bunch of different dates, right? 20 the 30 2030s at some point is when the talk is going to run out. What's the latest on kind of what the numbers look like and, and and what is the truth behind it? Yeah, so the every year the Social Security Board of Trustees puts out a report and that report is filled with a bunch of complex language about actuarial tables and other things, but the bottom line they make a projection determining at what future year the Social Security Trust Fund is going to run out of money. Um, every year it changes because one year based on economic data and potential growth of the population and a lot of other information Maybe it's 2032 one year, then the next year it's 2033, then it's 2035, and it really moves around. But one thing we can say is that over the last many years, it's a range between 2031 and 2034. That is when they project Social Security Trust Fund is going to run out of money. So how do they come with that number? What, what are the factors that play into what the Social Security has to, to pay back out? Uh, um, really good. A lot of complex numbers, uh, but primarily they're looking at how many recipients are there now, both of Social Security income and Social Security disability payments. How many recipients do we think we're going to have in the future based on people passing away and new people entering into those ages where they could potentially receive benefits, economic growth, how much, how much in payroll taxes, which is one way or the way that Social Security is funded. So think about it. Every time you get paid W-2 at work, they're taking payroll tax out, Social Security payroll tax. That money goes into the trust fund and is then used to pay out benefits. So there's two components at the end of the day for funding Social Security benefits. One of them is annual payments coming from Social Security payroll tax directly out of paychecks. The other one is we have this bucket of money over here. There's been a surplus of incoming payroll tax for all decades, and they've been filling up that bucket with a lot of money. Now, 2022, I believe it was, was the first year that they had to start using that because the incoming taxes were not enough to pay all benefits. So they had to supplement that by drawing out of the bucket of money over here. That is what they see as running out in the year 2033 under the May 2024 calculation is the trust fund runs out, the incoming payroll taxes of a certain magnitude will still be there in the future. Okay. So it's, it won't completely run out because that's what I've always wondered is, well, no, I'm, I'm still paying into it. So there's still going to be money coming in from yeah. everybody that's working at some point. So what then does happen when if, let's just say if, that, that gets drawn down, that bucket of money gets drawn down. What happens? Well, at this point, um, they believe that payroll taxes in the year 2033 should cover roughly 70 to 75% of all benefits that need to pay be paid out. So that's one thing. 
But when we actually, and if they do nothing, there could be, a, we don't know for a fact what they're going to do, but if they do nothing, there is a chance that benefits would be reduced by some percentage. Does that mean they have to take it out equally on everyone? Or maybe they, people who are actively receiving benefits have less of a cut, and then they take out more on folks that are younger in the future. There's a multitude of ways they could handle this, but the bottom line is there's going to be a shortfall if the government does not take action. And unfortunately, the current political climate is such that if you just mention the word social security and trying to fix it, you're immediately categorized as somebody who's trying to destroy social security. When reality is, if they don't do something to fix social security, that's what's going to destroy social security. So when we think about how are they going to fix it, I always say, look at history as the path. So let's look back in 1983. Ronald Reagan was president, the Greenspan Commission, Alan Greenspan uh, being the guy that was put in charge of this, had to determine how do we make Social Security viable for decades to come. So when, when you look at this, it's happened before, right? This isn't just some anomaly that all of a sudden we're going, oh, man, uh, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. I'm going to have no money coming yeah. in, in retirement. Like, I'm very concerned. I know I know it's a very good talking point for a lot of people. And maybe because it's, you know the proliferation of social media makes it so we're constantly right. bombarded with messages. But is this something that's new? Uh, it's not because it had. they were faced with the exact same challenges in 1983. They were going to run out of money. They had to figure out some way of changing the dynamic so that here, here, here's when you really break this down, what needs to be done to make Social Security more viable? Over the generations, they must receive more money and pay out less money. That is the bottom line. There's you know, over 30 recommendations that the legislative branch at the federal government has on how they can fix social security. But every one of those either adds money to the system or pays out money to the system. So they could, for example, raise social security payroll tax. That's something they could do. Um, but what they did in 83, one of their primary and really most impactful decisions was to move full retirement age out a year. So FRA, full retirement age, was 66. They took three decades to completely move Social Security FRA out to age 67. So for example, my FRA and your FRA are 67 years old. Remember, full retirement age isn't the most money you get from Social Security. It's just this milestone midway between the least amount you can get and the most amount you can get. So let's say your FRA is 67. If the government were to make a change and say, you know, that's what they did in 83 and it gave us an extra 30 years, maybe by moving full retirement age out to age 68, 69, or 70, or a combination of all three, for people, now if you're younger, this is what you won't like, but for people that are younger, not those already receiving benefits. So if I were to guess, and this is a complete subjective opinion on my part, my guess is they are going to come up with changes to full retirement age for people born after a certain year. I don't know what that year would be, and that they will make very little changes to people who are actively receiving benefits or who qualify for benefits, even if they're not receiving it, and basically anybody 55 or older. Now, that begs the question, why would they not make changes or make the changes less impactful to somebody 55 or older? And there's a really good reason for this one. <laughs> the reason is, who votes by the largest percentage as a demographic? And it's senior citizens. And if a politician's primary goal is to stay in office, they don't want to do something that's going to cause one of the largest voting blocks and the demographic that votes in the largest percentage to vote them out of office. So if they're going to come up with rules, my guess is they're going to impact other demographics, meaning people who have not um, reached that age of 55 or older, because those people, I mean, think about what you even said. And if you were to ask a 20 something about social security, what do they typically say? Ben? They say, uh, it's not going to be there for me. So they already have that psychology built into their mindset. I believe they're going to get Social Security. It's going to look a little bit different, but they already have it built into their mindset. And I think the government, to some extent, relies on that long life timeline that these people already have a belief system in place where you go to somebody who's 55 or older, their belief system is different. Their belief system is, I've paid into it. I deserve it. I should get it. And rightfully so, in my opinion. And I think that's why the government kind of looks at 
their rule changes from that perspective. Social security planning can be complex, but you don't have to navigate it alone. Visit our one-stop social security resource at bowmanfinancialstrategies.com. Discover detailed videos, downloadable PDF guides, and the latest updates from the Social Security Administration. Don't let social security questions hold you back. Click the link in the show description and bring social security into focus. Well, I know we keep hearing about this quite a bit. It's a popular talking point right now in the current election season that we're going through, and it has been in past uh, cycles as well. And not to sound skeptical about our politicians, but I'm sure this is a good thing for them that be having this campaign uh, topic to to really kind of push home to their uh, their voters. But when do you actually see something happen with this? Because I feel like we've been hearing about the future of Social Security for a number of years, but not a lot of action taking place. So you think it's something that, that happens in the next couple of years, or is it closer to that 2033 timeline? I believe it'll be closer to the 2033 timeline. I wish it would be earlier because it would be better for everybody. Number one, we'd all know the rules. We'd stop hearing the noise about Social Security running out of money. People would be more confident in their planning. But unfortunately, political wins, I think, will keep them from making it, like certainly not in this election cycle, and that's going to be four more years. Nobody's going to touch Social Security. But when we get closer to 2033, let's say 2030, um, I think then you're in the 11th hour, and now the politicians have an excuse of why they must address it address it because if it's looming and we're going to run out and there's a threat of a social security pay cut then i think the voting population is going to mandate changes late or right away as opposed to right now um i think that there's just too much political divisiveness going on that does not allow that topic to really see the light of day in a meaningful productive way well, it's, it's a, there's a lot to kind of sort through and, and, yeah. and figure out. And I guess this too could shift, right? I mean, if you talk about 2030, six years from us doing this show, that the, the numbers could back up some, right? The trustees report could show us maybe it's 2040 and the can keeps getting kicked down the road. Um, you're right, although I don't think that's the direction it would okay. go. I, I don't see it moving out farther. If anything, I actually probably see that number either staying within that range of 2031 to 2033 or even becoming shorter like 2030. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's uh, going to push out um, very much farther, if at all. I think if anything, it'll come closer to us, which will force the issue and they're going to have to make some decisions at some point. Um, otherwise, the politicians will all get voted out of office for mm -hmm. letting Social Security fail. So for anybody that's, I guess, under 55 and you know maybe is looking on down the road a little bit more, they should still, in your based on what I think what you said is, still count on that as an income source, but should you plan differently if you're 20 years from retirement and not take Social Security into account as much as maybe someone that's retiring in the next few years? No, I, I would take Social Security into account. The difference is, you know, when you're younger, the estimated Social Security benefits that you have are typically understated because the the way they calculate your benefits is based on something called the average index monthly earnings calculation or the aim calculation in in lay terms it's it's a complex 35 year average of your highest wages that's kind of what determines your benefit if you made more money you get a higher check if you made less money you get a smaller check but the way they calculate it that if you were a lower income earner during your life, Social Security will replace a larger percentage of your check. And if you're a higher wage earner, somebody that makes 200,000 plus a year, let's say, although they get a larger check, it replaces a smaller portion of their previous income. Um, but with all that said, your Social Security accuracy, in my opinion, doesn't really start coming into some clarity until you get into your 50s because you haven't even gotten your 35 years of you know, average uh, wages to use in the calculation. And if you have a zero in one of those 35 years, you know, that lowers your average. So um, I believe that you should count on Social Security being there in some form. If you wanted to be really conservative, um, use 75% of the number that you see on your current statement. And I believe you'll be pleasantly surprised by the actual number in the future. But that's kind of what they're saying is there's going to be a 25% reduction in order to keep making payments if the trust fund is allowed to run out. Okay. Makes me feel a bit better. I've gone to SSA gov and actually looked at the calculation. So it does make sense. I hadn't really thought about that average 
moving up as I get older because of the the first couple of years when I was making two thousand dollars working as a sixteen right. year old. That's all averaged in, so that makes me feel a little better about the future. Well, look, I'm, I'm sure you probably have questions about this. If you're wondering about Social Security, the future, what it, how it's going to play into your plan, how you should account for it, also the claiming strategies, right? When you need to claim right. Social Security, because I'm guessing a lot of people, Eric, probably think, well, hearing this news, let me go ahead and turn it on as quick as I can. That is a common reaction. One I would encourage you not to make. You don't want to make emotional shoot from the hip decisions. There's a lot of reasons not to turn Social Security on earlier. One of them is taxation. Another one is the earnings threshold. If you're working and you turn on Social Security prior to full retirement age, whether you know it or not, they're going to take your Social Security benefits back or at least a portion of them. That's called the earnings threshold. So there are a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. And one of the more common things I hear is I'll turn on my Social Security earlier. I'll invest it. Surely I'll make a guaranteed 6% per year every year. And that'll be better than if I were to delay taking Social Security. Well, the answer to that is it doesn't take into account major variables. Number one, you might not even be able to keep the benefit if you're still working. You literally would have to pay it back so you'd have no money to invest, but you'd be stuck at the smaller check for the rest of your life once it becomes available to you. Number two, you're totally not taking into account spousal survivor benefits, that if you're the higher wage earner, you file early and then you die, your spouse theoretically is going to get a smaller check depending on when they file for those spousal survivor benefits. And then taxes. If you're receiving benefits and you're working, you're going to increase your taxes through something called the provisional income calculation that can literally put you in tax brackets that actually don't even exist. So I call them ghost tax brackets, mm -hmm. but you could pay as high as 49% in marginal effective tax uh, brackets if you have combined wages and social security and some capital gains. Mm -hmm. I do go through that in my uh, online webinar series, and it's just extremely important to know what you don't know. And if you're not familiar with all of those concepts and you make a rash decision, you could find yourself really remorseful about making that call. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are in that boat. I, I would be, right? I'm just ignorant to, to all, the, all the factors that go into making that decision on Social Security. So it sounds like there's a lot into it. And again, if you have questions, I encourage you to reach out to Eric. 303-222-8034, bowmanfinancialstrategies.com as well. You can schedule a complimentary consultation online, which I would absolutely encourage anyone that is unsure about social security, the strategy to take, because it is a big piece of your retirement income puzzle. So absolutely. we want to make sure we get it right. Eric, good information. I do feel a little bit better about the future of social security. I know some changes are probably coming more than likely, but hopefully they won't be as drastic, I think, as many people worry about. Yep. Well, I appreciate you guiding us through the podcast here today, Ben. I always appreciate your time. And uh, to the viewers, thanks for watching Uncommon Sense, and I hope I get to speak with you soon.